Um, Rick was appointed to be the uh, regional coordinator and did a um, fantastic job. We also uh, had uh, Liz and Ian at the coalface uh, doing work. And I think at one point we had 50 of our staff involved, um, but I'm um, not exactly sure on that number, but it was a huge amount. So uh, regional council really threw everything at it. Um, and Jeriff out delivering fruit, and I was busily ringing um, growers all around the place, and um, we were um, getting, and they were, and what, the good thing about it was everyone that we contacted was really keen to help, and um, um, it took us a little while to get it, um, get the thing going, but we got it going, that was great. But um, before I go on, I just want to say um, a huge um, slap on the back for Tanita Fenua, um, they lifted the game just everywhere. Wairua, I reckon, I've never seen Wairua. Only around Ross Shield tournaments do you see Wairua gather as good as they gathered around this one. Um, they were sensational, and I think uh, everybody there just seemed to step up. But the Taifenuas, the Taifenua in Napier, uh, led by Tania, she was texting us, and, and um, she did a fantastic job. And the Taifanua and Heratonga, of course, were just legendary. And probably everyone else, too. I just want to... They were the, they were the people that um, I was uh, pretty connected to, but I know everyone lifted their game and did a fantastic job. So, um, And I did like Roger's report. I did like the fact, and I think and Rick endorsed it, that um, we actually have a chance here. Um, you know, Roger's saying they discovered new uh, people who are living in the region, and I think we've all discovered new things, which has been marvellous. And how do we keep this um, this uh, unity that we've got um, going is just um, going to be one of our challenges. And on that, I have to tell you that the uh, regional leaders, the mayors, have been meeting uh, three week, uh, three times every week, including uh, the chair of the iwi. So it's basically the mayors and the two chairs have been meeting um um, three times a week. We're now meeting weekly. And also the civil defence group that Rick leads with all the um, the head of police, the head of social welfare, um, the head, the chair of the hospital and all the chairs and all the mayors, they've been, they were meeting three times a week as well. Um, and that's gone back to weekly now. But we've never, uh, Rick called it the Hawke's Bay Cabinet. And um, I think that was just a marvellous thing. We've never, ever, been able to sit with the chief of police and get her report or the chief of our social welfare and get her report. It's just been sensational. And we've all got to know each other uh, really well. And we've never had that opportunity before. And Rick and I have been discussing how do we keep the Hawke's Bay cabinet going? Um, because it's been harder with Matariki. <coughs> Matariki has been um, is more focused on economic development, so I think that that the uh, CD thing will now morph into um, more Zoom um, uh, with Matariki. Of course, all the um, chairs of the treaty claiming groups are there with the mayor. So we're in it's a sort of a stage two from the health issues, and we we'll all stay at home and look after each other, <coughs> to um, how do we get our economy going. And I just want to focus a little bit on that. Um, I know there's some concerns in some areas um, uh, that we will get our economy going um, at the cost to our environment. That is not going to happen in Hawke's Bay. I can tell you that now. Um, but um, we do have some short-term problems, especially in tourism, which is um, singularly the biggest industry in Hawke's Bay. Um, a lot of people... Um, um, employed, um, our calculation is 6,000 directly and indirectly employed in tourism. And of course, they have been hit the hardest by far. So our regional council is committed to um, continue with the um, marketing funding. And um, we have been on a couple of um, webinars, didn't even know what a webinar was um, um, a week ago, <laughs> a month ago, but um, talking to them and um, seeing how we can help um, get some, at least 50% of tourism going. We're in a unique position in Hawke's Bay because 80% of our tourism is domestic. Uh, so um, we do have an opportunity to, to get that going. Of course, uh, something that really concerns me is um, getting our economy back. Because just to go back a bit, you've got to remember that three months ago, we had the highest GDP growth and the highest employment rates in New Zealand. So we are a surge economy and we were doing really well and we were just looking at how do we support it. And now we have COVID 
situation, plus we have this dreadful drought, plus we have TB. So it's almost like we've got a perfect storm of um, things hitting us. And the, those farmers in Central Hawke's Bay and um, even in Central in, um, in the Heratonga area now really suffering from drought and it's just dreadful for them. But the TB, the guys are TB and um, I know um, Michelle actually, I think there's 12 farmers there, but it's a large area of, of, of um, our ruhi that um, can't trade their stock and those farmers are in real dire situations. So they're not going to be able to contribute to our GDP growth, so we've just got to put them aside and help them as best we can um, and look at what are the things that are going to keep our people employed um, um, going forward. So we've been very focused on that, um, and um, um, that's going to be uh, my focus certainly over the next month. Uh, we've been over the um, the government um, funding um, issues, so I won't re-go over that. Um, there's two other issues I want to talk about. One is Three Waters. I'm not sure how much we know about Three Waters, but basically um, they are the water, uh, fresh water, um, drainage water and sewage water, and they are currently controlled by um, councils. So um, every council controls their own water. The government don't like that, and um, they see that it's not sustainable. It isn't sustainable. Small councils like Wairau will never get a Rolls-Royce water solution because they just don't have enough rate payers in their catchment. Central Hawke's Bay is similar, um, so there has to be some rationalisation, and we've accepted from government um, that that is the case. Um, so we have put a proposition to them um, this is, a, this is a conversation high on the uh, agenda of our uh, mayors and our leaders forum. And our proposition, if they do rationalise, at least they rationalise within our regional council of Rohi. Um, that's not favoured by them at the moment, um, so we're in continued discussion. But certainly um, the, the government is going to do something about um, three waters. It's very high on the agenda. And we just got to make sure that it doesn't go outside our district. We don't want our waters controlled by an authority that um, that's, um, sits in Palmerston North or Wellington. <clears throat> the other thing, the last thing that I want to talk about is orchard fires. Everybody knows that um, I am hotly against the industrial burning of, um, of green wood, which um, some of my fruit growing mates do. And um, I'm in hot discussion with them at the moment. Um, I, it is my intention to um, talk to the RPC, and we're talking to them at 2.30, about making a, land uh, um, a plan change around this. Um, we cannot continue to have fruit growers um, pushing out uh, trees and burning them straight away and putting all that poisonous smoke into our air. Um, we spend a lot of time talking to our firewood merchants about storing the wood for one year. We spend a lot of time talking to our, our, our people who live and have open fires at home to burn only um, uh, dry wood, and yet we let fruit growers burn green wood, and it is ridiculous. So um, I'm having some interesting disputes with, um, not disputes, most of the fruit growers are on my side, I have to tell you, um, because they realise and um, um, we are working out a way how we can, how they can reasonably do this um, and um, and we can protect the air quality of the people, especially in Heratonga, which has such a, um, a big inversion layer. So what happens is they light the fire, the smoke goes up and just goes straight into the inversion layer and straight across doesn't go into the atmosphere. We don't want it in the atmosphere anyway. So that's just a personal hobby horse of mine, but I'm pretty determined about it. Any questions? Thanks, Rex. Um, um, Mike, um, uh, just to give an update on um, the three waters, I suppose, Rex, um, Mike might want to speak to it because um, we had to split ourselves between the regional council, Hui, and the three waters um, uh, workshop. So, Mike, would you be able to comment for our committee? Uh, so, yes, there was a group of us that had a had a conversation uh, along with uh, uh, Penny and his and his team. Uh, it was basically a reporting. We had a report received from a consultancy group who were doing some work 
on behalf of regional council, uh, trying to get some feedback from uh, Tangata Whenua, Mana Whenua, around um, Mana Whenua's position around these uh, around this particular Cobalt Path of Three Waters. Um, it would be fair to say it's getting back to my um, my comments in regards to the Tai Whenua reports. Um, really, really important that there is that conversation up front with um, with with Tangata Whenua. Um, that that conversation takes um, takes the course of of um, recognising the uh, Treaty Treaty of Waitangi as as a partnership. Uh, so, capsulating our our pakaro, our kōrero within uh, within the within the documentation. Uh, so, uh, this <coughs> got off a little over a year. Um, so it was really good that they had captured our values uh, at, at, at the front of the report, just that we struggled to see them through through the rest of the report. So they, you know, so they told us what our what our values were, were. We agreed with them or what those values were, just that we actually couldn't, we struggled to find it when it came to the actual report itself. Um, so we basically just wanted to highlight that there was a need for Tonga to Whenua to actually be part of the of the formulating uh, of that actual report going back to regional council. Kia ora. Um, it was felt, you know, it was felt a little bit that that the consultants were, if you like, looking from the perspective of, of the uh, client, this being the regional council in this case, and perhaps uh, the the views uh, of Mana Whenua had kind of been pushed to the back. Um, but at the end of the, the end of the day, there was agreement that we needed to do more. There was more conversation to be had. Pete, did you want to add anything, Roger? Uh, I do. Um, yes, I do. I just want to add a couple of things because I think it's important. Um, it was a fairly robust discussion, which I think took the consultants a little bit by surprise. <laughs> and um, I think the, the issue is, is that on the back of it, Mike's just explained to you, to you all that everyone was talking about Māori values and, and things like that, and then not seeing it through, permeating through the report, just um, put up in the front. And then an expectation that, that those of us on that Zoom call would then burrow down into detail about this, um, started a conversation because the point was we could put, spend a lot of time doing this and go back to our marae, go back to our people. <clears throat> but in the end, we, we don't know that the council will even entertain this idea. So in other words, all the Māori effort goes in and then the councils could jettison this idea um, at the stroke of one meeting. So one of the things we requested is to, to get a, a statement from the councils about how serious they are with us and how far they would actually listen to what we have to say. Because, and I think just if you want to think broader than this for, for those that are that control the council and, and both management and government governance, is that um, we're now entering into a different style of of um, of what you what was called earlier consultation. Peter raised it in terms of the um, best control, and consultation doesn't mean calling a Zoom hui and getting a few people on on there and just talking to us. It has to take a, a whole new new pattern. If you want the voices of our marae, our hapu inside the decisions, then then the ground has changed. And um, consultation has to be taken seriously, not just holding a few hui every now and then and, and having a consultant come up with a report. So besides the detail that Mike put out, that was underlying what we said. It In the end, it was a positive one from our particular point of view, but um, 
it, it does, it, to me, it's the beginning of a new set of ground rules when it comes to um, Papu Marae engagement with, with local government. Perhaps, um, no, just perhaps to add some shape to that conversation. So this was the Hawke's Bay Three Waters Review. Uh, and rather late in that process, uh, or, or the key parties that uh, are conducting that, uh, Tony Goodlass, uh, who, who works from within Napier City Council, Morrison Lowe, uh, uh, Dan Bonifant, uh, Cristani and Reputation Matters. And so that's the Hawke's Bay Three Waters Review Team, uh, who saw an opportunity uh, to engage before they were, uh, were required to provide a report back to our wow. Hawke's Bay Regional CE's uh, leaders. Uh, so there are two live conversations that are going on. One was this one that's been reflected and, and Dr. Mark is quite correct. After that meeting, the consultants were reeling. Uh, they, had to, uh, they had to sort of go back into meditation uh, <laughs> after, after the feedback they received. Uh, but notwithstanding, those two live conversations is one in terms of the Hawke's Bay Three Waters Review. That here was an opportunity uh, to relook at the values. They, they, the values were not ones that were conjured up by the review team. They were actually captured uh, in a number of hui through 2019 by the HB review team. And so these were brought back up in full sight at this hui just to check and validate that they, they'd been captured well. It's quite correct that uh, uh, that partnership uh, was probably the resonating call, uh, co-governance as opposed to consultation. Uh, the scenario scenario of windows opening, bringing people in, then out again, and then closing the window. Uh, so that point was really taken on board by the review team, to the extent that that's a particular and strong theme uh, that they're hoping to be able to put forward uh, back to the regional CEs uh, in about June. The second live conversation that's going on, and James is probably better positioned than myself to talk about this, is that uh, central government uh, also has a three waters theme and discussion that's, that's very, very live at the moment. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm quite unclear as to which way that is moving. Um, so, that, so that's just a wee bit more shape to say it was a valuable hui. The feedback uh, was heard uh, and uh, the points about misinterpretation uh, uh, were, were picked up as well. And just to touch on that point, I remember years ago, Moana Jackson, uh, he talked about uh, listening, hearing, uh, interpreting. He talked about the grapes of wrath, where it was translated into Maori and then translated back. And when it came back, instead of grapes of wrath, it came back as angry raisins. So there's a, there's a bit of an issue uh, uh, about sort of hearing and understanding and not missing Michelle. the points that have been made. Gilda. Michelle, can I comment, please? Sorry, Rex, now you caught me up. Um, I, you know, yeah, cool. Go ahead, Rex. Well, I just need to answer this because um, I wasn't aware that um, we had that uh, those consultants going out, and I actually wonder why they did. Um, because you know, we, uh, I was summoned about six months, maybe eight months ago with the other regional mayors to the airport, or Hawke's Bay Airport, by Minister Mahuta, and she told us in no uncertain terms they are going to do this. And she said to us, get your house in order, come back to us with the, how you want to do this, but we're doing this. So this has nothing to do with regional council um, um, trying to make up some rules here. We're going, we've gone back to our community, but I mean, maybe they should have gone into the room in the first place and said, we've been sent in here by Minister Mahuta. She's going to do this. So, um, you know, and at the moment, we are fighting to be able to keep the process within our Luhi and not have it um, go outside. So one thing we need to be is stop squabbling on this and get united at the win for us is to have it in so, so wire or to wipe a rao. Otherwise, we'll lose the whole damn thing. I, th I think they've thanks. Rick. Um, I think they created the um, that that uh, talking about that ministry Tomata Oro Arawai, and um, it's probably what uh, Minister Mahuta is leading. 
Um, She's but, leading yeah, the they engaged us as um, chairs of our Māori committees, uh, I suppose, to try and get us all in one Zoom hui to uh, Tautoko or whatever, or give them the, what was it, Mike? It was about getting to the final model. Um, and I hear you, Rex. Um, uh, there's the the CCOs, which are managed. What is it? Managed in the so there's the one in Auckland, which also takes care of the Waikato water yeah. water care. And there's the one yeah. in Wellington, which is a bit different. Eh? So the one in Auckland, they own the assets. They do. Whereas in Wellington, uh, it's co-managed, day, eh? and it's it's mm. with like, the, the councils and That's that are still involved and blah blah. So, yeah, um, I, I suppose that was just our feedback. Um, when I looked at the two structures, the Taumata Arawai, the, the central government structure, um, Māori were advisory whānau, we were to the side in our own separate little uh, circle. And, and, and uh, one thing with the, uh, the models that were put forward for the CCO, a council controlled organisations, uh, at least they included the iwi within the governance structure. So, um, yeah, um, conversation is still to be had, but I think the main thing concern was for us is that it still needs to go back to our people in the in the councils, um, you know, because, yeah, they, uh, Central Hawks Bay and White, or we've, we've got some pretty big, big bills coming up, and would you want to be part of that? I don't know. Um, but then there's efficiencies in working together. But like the Mahanui Kuratai, or what, I don't know. But um, just um, that's my take on it anyway. I, I was wondering, Petty, and, and thank you, Petty, um, for organising all that, um, but I was just wondering perhaps is, is it okay to send out the feedback summary that the consultants um, sent to us? Would that be appropriate? Uh, uh I, so, so my my role was to sort of bring the hui uh, to to coordinate the hui. <coughs> I'd have to go back to uh, the review team to see if that's possible to go wider than the ones that were part of that day. Just for our, um, I think because myself and Mike attended, I only was there for about half an hour, hour, but um, so that we can give the outcome of our hui to the yeah. to our representatives. So the um, two. Of since we attended on behalf of them. The two objectives of the review team of that hui were one, just to uh, seek endorsement in terms of the values. And the other part was to look through those values against uh, the structural model options. Mm -hmm. There were four of them. And to see which of those provided meaningful input for Māori. So that mm -hmm. those were the two objectives. Mm. But they didn't get the second phone <laughs> because we wouldn't take the box. So. Um, yeah, um, so, oh, okay, if you could follow up with that, Petty, and just advise on me, because I think it would be of interest to our membership. Um, Kildur, was there any other, sorry, Rex, uh, any other questions about Kildur, Rex? Chair, I note that Rex <coughs> got his hand up. Yeah. Oh, Rick, <coughs> Rick, where are you, Rick? You won't have a I'm question. Here. Have a statement. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I just want to get this help with this to get this thing into a context. <clears throat> because as a consequence of the, um, the water crisis in Havelock North, it came to the government's attention <clears throat> that uh, councils, in his opinion, wasn't handling the articulation of water as well as could do or should do. There were many other questions about water. Uh, one was about the cost of how to re replace the sewage system in Wairau amongst a whole pile of others around the country. There were places that should have sewage systems and didn't because councils couldn't afford to do them. There's problems with the wastewater, on and on it went. And when the government raised these issues with the councils, the councils themselves then simply complained about how difficult and problematic it was and how they couldn't afford to do it. And so they just made all this great big problem. So what's happened now, in my opinion, the government's just turned around and said, well, because it's too difficult for you, you can't afford to do it, uh, we'll set up a new entity, which will do it. That's right. And that's what's happened. So they've all complained that they can't do it, and so the government says, well, you can't. you told us that. You can't afford it. Well, we'll set up a new entity. They haven't told us what it's going to be like, where it's got what sort of management structure, governance structure, etc. Other than they want to have it <clears throat> uh, one uh, to service about a million people per, per, per entity. So I guess that's the lower half of the North Island. Uh, a million people wouldn't be in Auckland. There'd be one for the far north, one for Waikato, one for the south island. Who knows? But that's what it's looking like. And Rex is saying, well, that's too big. We shouldn't have it, one for our region. But 
make no mistake, <clears throat> because the councils <clears throat> have made it very clear that the problems are too big for them, too expensive for them, the government has taken them at their word. And a lot of the councils are now recoiling from shock meaning, oh dear, we're not going to have to do this anymore. What does that mean for us? What's left for us to do? They're still trying to figure it out. So what's the space? And Naya Mahuta has called their bluff. <laughs> they didn't think she would, but she's done. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Um, well, yeah, great, uh, Rick. Just to wind up, I mean, Rick is exactly right. Um, this is a situation where, um, and, and the government is right as well, because Wairu can't afford to fix their problem. Central Hawke's Bay is struggling to fix their problem. Um, even Hastings, look at the borrowing they've done to fix their problem. So, And Napier, Napier, you know, go on to the website and have a look at how the drains and the go into the Arahuri Estuary. They've got a huge challenge. And as a region, we can do this together. Um, and we've got to convince the government that we can do it together with our own people. Um, and there will be a lot of cross subsidisation, but we do that in our smaller communities. That's not a problem to us. It's whether we're happy to have the control of all this go outside our region into some big authority. And I personally don't think that's good for us. But uh, Mahuta's going to do this. She, oh, I'll tell you what, she had steely eyes and um, she's not backing off because of a bunch of um, provincial politicians. She, she eyeballed us and said, I'm doing it. Well, he near to her. Um, right. Any other questions for Rex's? Oh, we'll move on. Thanks, Rex. So we'll move on to your report, James. Well, James might have had to go off to a meeting. Uh, with him. Uh, I'm here. Kia ora koutou. Uh, look, um, perhaps just, 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 to, just to follow on from the Three Waters discussion just had, just to be very clear that uh, while the government is talking to the local government sector uh, informally at the moment, uh, there is not a formal uh, reform no. process underway uh, in Wellington in terms of Cabinet hasn't made any decisions. Um, and, uh, and and so there's a wee way to go in terms of us understanding in more formal terms what government's proposing. Here in Hawke's Bay, the work that we're doing that uh, Petty outlined before and uh, others have commented on, that at the moment um, uh, is, a, is an options, issues and options analysis for the five councils of the region to then make decisions about. Um, if central government doesn't progress with an enforced uh, bigger reform agenda and leaves Hawke's Bay to box on uh, with its own reform process, what will need to happen is that there will be uh, amendments to long-term plans uh, required in a special consultative procedure that will need to be uh, a very substantial exercise to uh, ensure that every Hawke's Bay resident and ratepayer is aware of the issues and is meaningfully engaged before any decision is taken. This is a really big deal and a really big exercise that lies ahead. So that, that, that you, can, you can expect to hear an awful lot more about this and there to be a lot more engagement uh, once the, the analytical work around the issues and options has been completed, and we'll keep you posted on that. I should just stress, and as, as Rex pointed out, for a regional council, this is not really, um, we're not in the middle of this. We're supporting the exercise because we are concerned about the capability and capacity of the smaller councils in the region to particularly meet the environmental standards and aspirations that we hold and expect of them with their wastewater. Uh, and stormwater, uh, and also the concerns that we have about the uh, suitability of drinking water following the Havelock North uh, incident. So, so we're very much in support of reform that improves the management of water in Hawke's Bay, but our, our own assets are not part of this reform process at the moment. It is the assets of the territorial authorities. So look, uh, just, just um, what I wanted to very quickly highlight uh, for the committee uh, is the uh, the focus of, of the council over the last few months. Um, look, it won't surprise people to know that uh, that has been uh, predominantly in relation to COVID-19. So our Civil Defence and Emergency Management Group uh, started preparation for the COVID situation in late January uh, and began ramping up uh, their partnership with the District Health Board, uh, the various councils and other um, social sector providers, et cetera, 
to prepare for uh, what's ultimately transpired by way of the national lockdown and the uh, declaration of a national state of emergency, which we are still in and has just been extended uh, today for another seven days. So uh, we, we, we were well prepared and the regional council itself in terms of its core operations had planning in place and preparation of needing to uh, get our staff working from home. Uh, and so we had those plans in place and we were ready to go when the Prime Minister announced uh, on Monday the uh, 21st of March that uh, we were going into lockdown in two days time. So we, it was a bit of a scramble, but we had um, uh, fantastic support from our IT teams to get our staff all set up to work remotely. And since then, we've had uh, the majority of the Regional Council staff uh, successfully working from home and continuing to perform their, their, their duties. Uh, awful lot of Zoom meetings like this, but uh, they have been able to work remotely. Under the level four, as I think Liz mentioned earlier on, we still maintained essential services around pollution response, uh, urgent compliance uh, matters, and also our flood uh, modeling, sorry, our flood uh, prediction monitoring work uh, to ensure that we were all ready to go there. Uh, and we had a skeleton crew in terms of our works group uh, operating as well, just keeping our pump stations uh, uh, ready to go in case we had a, a flood event. Uh, but we had most most uh, staff for that level four period uh, working from home. Shifting into level three, we've been able to deploy all of our field-based staff back into the field. Uh, and so uh, the majority of those are, are back to doing their, their normal work and uh, where they are required to uh, be in our buildings for a period of the working day, uh, whether it be dropping off or picking up equipment or downloading data, that's occurring and we've got a skeleton crew uh, in the uh, Dalton Street office uh, at the moment. Uh, we also have um, uh, reverted back to normal functioning at our works group and so all of our staff that are out there mowing, um, doing the, the work around the, the river burdens, uh, our regional parks, etc. that's all fully functioning again. And we now have planning underway for uh, level two uh, and what that will mean for uh, for, for the organisation. We um, are at this point uh, waiting on final uh, uh, um, instructions from central government, which will be coming in the next uh, 48 hours about the level two transition. Uh, but we're working on the assumption that our buildings will be open to the public. We've made a range of, of changes to our, our buildings that you'll notice when you do come back in eventually, uh, that we have perspex screens and, um, and a range of uh, other measures that ensure that we, we, we continue to manage the public health risk through level two. Uh, we will have a larger number of staff returning to our offices, but we will also be keeping um, some staff uh, working from home where it's possible for them to do so, so we can manage the social distancing requirements within our uh, our office buildings. So that planning is well advanced and nearly finalised. Um, overall, I'd say that the, the, the Regional Council um, functions and its people uh, have, have seamlessly transitioned through these, these different phases, and we've been able to uh, maintain business continuity largely across most of what we do. We have had a significant number of staff deployed to the Civil Defence um, emergency response, which through the level of uh, level four period was running two eight hour shifts seven days a week. Uh, and so we, that, that did have an impact on, on our organisation. Uh, we have had um, our staff who haven't been able to do their, their normal work because they've been helping with that welfare response. But that's the model that uh, uh, we have ready to go for any civil defence response. And we've worked very closely with uh, our colleagues and the other councils to staff that, uh, that, that, that welfare exercise, uh, which is now uh, winding down to a, a lower level of activity, um, but a higher degree of complexity in terms of some of the longer term impacts of the COVID-19 situation starting to have an impact on households uh, and on communities. So that there is a significant body of work that lies ahead in terms of regional recovery, uh, both on the social side as well as the economic side. Um, the Regional Council is one of a number of players uh, in that, working with um, uh, with, uh, with Nadi Kahununui Incorporated, with the Taifenua groups, 
uh, and also uh, with our other councils and the business community around this this whole next phase. Uh, we recognise that this is a this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. This is a, this is going to be a long term set of issues for our community to deal with. The other significant piece of um, activity for the regional council right now is preparing our annual plan. Uh, and you will see uh, that we will be sending out an invite uh, today, if it hasn't already gone, uh, to invite all members of this committee to a workshop next week, where we'd like to present to you uh, a picture of our current financial situation. Uh, we are uh, uh, expecting uh, a significant drop in income for the regional council, uh, particularly from our investment income that's derived from Napier Port and our investment portfolio. So there's a high degree of uncertainty about how, how, how much of a reduction in income we're going to experience, but we certainly know that we won't be uh, having the level of income that we had previously budgeted for. So uh, the, the annual plan is our budget for the, the, the coming financial year that starts on the 1st of July. And so the work we want to do with you is to share uh, the financial challenges we've got and the decisions that we're taking to manage uh, through that financial uh, uh, challenge, if you like, which will involve a, an increased level of borrowing, uh, particularly uh, to cover that, that, that income shortfall. Plus, the council would like us to keep uh, rates uh, held at their current level with no increase next year, uh, this, this, sorry, this coming next financial year. Uh, and, and so that will put an additional borrowing cost uh, on council as well. So um, we're also looking at what in our annual plan we can do to contribute to the regional recovery. Uh, and we're working on, on having a, a recovery fund uh, in the budget that we can help uh, hopefully leverage with central government money uh, to create some uh, employment uh, in and around uh, the work that we do uh, as, as a council. Um, and we're obviously, as per the discussion earlier on, we're waiting to hear from central government as to what funding might be available uh, and, uh, and and so all this will come together into a package for community consultation uh, so we will be consulting the community uh, on this annual plan uh, but we wanted to give you the opportunity next week uh, prior to uh, the community consultation to um, understand uh, what's on the table and to get your uh, thoughts and input uh, into that uh, annual plan process. So look, that's that's our, our big piece of work that lies ahead. And then once we've knocked that off, we want to get deeply into the long-term plan, which is that we want to have with you all uh, the next three years and, and how the council is going to achieve much more in its important areas of work around the environment, while also navigating what will probably be a challenging economic uh, environment for for all of us to be to be working in. So so that lies ahead in the latter stage of of, of the year. Uh, and what I would say is that uh, next week's discussion with you on the annual plan uh, is somewhat constrained by the fact that uh, we have a significant financial uh, issue now, and we also are in the third year of our existing long term plan. And so we won't be deviating significantly from the current work program. Uh, certainly, that's the instruction from council is that steady as she goes. So we don't have an opportunity to completely relitigate or rethink the way we operate. Um, but we are anticipating as part of that long term plan, doing some good hard thinking about whether uh, the regional council can deliver more with less, uh, and can work much smarter as an organisation uh, to achieve more uh, with a constrained financial set of circumstances. So um, that, that's all from me, Michelle. I'm very happy to take any questions anyone has. Thanks, James. Any questions, comments? See no hands up. Oh, oh, sorry, Paula. Paula, just got to turn your vol volume on, Matua. Can't wait. Just uh, congratulating all the uh, corridor that's come so far. Sounds exciting. Um, just getting in early. I'd love to be a part of that conversation, uh, James. Kia ora. Kia ora, Paura. Uh, look, we'll really value your input. Um, we do need to understand what's going on in every corner of the rohi, 
Uh, and one of the advantages of this committee is we've got really good geographic uh, representation. Uh, and so as we think about our plans for the next three years, it's important that we understand um, the issues for all of our communities uh, from sort of Mahanga uh, all, to, all the way down to Poronga Ho. Uh, and, and, and that's all fed into our prioritisation and our planning. So we'll welcome that. Uh, Any other comments, questions? Kaori? Okay, so um, thanks for that, um, uh, Korua. Uh, Rex and James, if I could get someone to move that Māori Committee receives the verbal update on current issues by the Regional Council Chair and Chief Executive. I'll move that. Kaora uh, and uh, seconded by um, uh, Papa Bill. Uh, all in favour? Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, Carrie. Thank you. Um, now we'll move on to item 10. We're getting through it uh, far now. Um, Hedatanga flood scheme. And I believe I saw Martina Graves and Chris Dolly. Are, are they with us? There's, there's Martina. There's Chris. There. Yes, kia ora. Just you, Martina. Yes, just me. That's oh, If that's okay. I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to share a presentation with you if I find it. Um, where is it? Sorry. Um, that by just sharing a PowerPoint. Yes. Can you see the presentation now? Yes, yes, Kapoi. Can you see the presentation? Her doing oh, the I can't stuff? see anything yet. No. Yeah. Right, hold on. Uh, sorry about that. No worries. Good. Right. Uh, see your screen, Martina? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, not really sure what happened. You can't see the presentation just yet, can you? No. No. Oh, right. Not. Um, Does anybody else have a copy of the presentation that they can share it on the screen to the staff? Uh, hold on, I got that here now, sorry. Yeah. Right. Share now. You should be able to see it now. Thank you. Great, great. Finally, sorry about that. Uh, all right. So, um, um, so Hertinga Plains Flood Control Scheme, I'll keep it brief and then uh, um, you ask as many questions as you like. Um, so, this is basically, this slide is just showing um, the extent of the Herdunga Plain Flood Control Scheme. This, um, this, this one is an area protected by the stop banks. So those orange dots, uh, that's basically indication of the stop banks, where this map here is showing more the boundary of the schemes and also is showing the drainage within the schemes. So when we are saying um, about Hertunga Plain flood control scheme and level of services review, we currently have the level of services set to one in 100 um, flood event. What, it, what this means is basically that in, in a one year, there is a 1% chance of um, big flood. Now, this slide is just basically showing a little bit of where we were before the um, Hertunga Plain scheme was set up, where this one is um, clearly showing um, the improvements and how fertile land we have after we set up the um, Hertunga Plain schemes. Um, I like to kind of show you a little bit of um, what it means when we are talking in certain events and so this top one um, is basically normal flows no flood where the uh, for example this one that means when we have water from bank to bank um, it's one in 500 where this one is uh, clearly showing that the one in 100 year 
where if we if there is a big even um one in 500 that's where we probably expect the water to go and um go out of the store banks overtopping um this slide here just to kind of show you um the assets within the flood control scheme so we have the stop banks, we have the berm area with the planting trees, and we have active channel. Um, now, there is obviously few options where we are talking about upgrade. Um, there is few options. For example, we can work with existing assets. Um, we can um, remove, so we can build the stop banks further away. So it's called make the room for the river. We can potentially do double stop banks. Um, there is just a few. Obviously, there is going to be way more auctioneering work. Um, so we are at the. So this one is just really quickly to show you the um, kind of roadmap of the del project delivery. This project is not is not a simple process, and what we also have to bear in mind is that. Um, we need way more co consultation and communication with EV uh, to understand the cultural aspect of this. So um, that's why I am here to kind of seek um, an adv advice on how we go about this going forward. We are at the beginning. We literally are just doing, um, we completed some flooding, uh, flooding frequency analysis. We are in progress of hydraulic modeling. We are progressing with asset condition assessment. And now we are thinking about the communication and consultation. So in 2012, um, the council agreed on upgrade or uh, working on a review of level of services and upgrade to one in 500. But we are really need to thinking about how we're going to consult and go through the process to final delivery. And what it means, because we had um, allocation of certain budget. I believe this budget is perhaps um, not enough. That may have to be reviewed and see what additional fundings we have. Now we have more um, players coming into the project team. And I would like to suggest that um, an, a Maori advisor will be part of the active project team along the process, because um, if we want to... Um, implement the cultural aspect, we do have to have an advisor who can help you um, help us deliver this aspect of um, for the project. So that's pretty much all from my side. I'm sorry I just ran through it, but um, I believe you have a lot to go through. So now if anyone has any questions, I am very happy to answer them. Thank you. Much appreciated, Martina. Um, any qu any questions on my? Uh, I I presume most especially from the Hidatanga Whanganui Aroto. Um, Fano, I just can't take it. Can, can we go back onto? Just can we just take away the, the sure. um, help? And thank you, so I can see the people. Any questions? Yeah, kia ora. Thank you for that, Martina. I guess yeah, it's, it's always useful to kind of look at what sort of infrastructure which are our council assets or our assets in terms of the protection of the planes, the floodplains, etc. Um, and the type of modelling but the level of service which involves a number of different things critical and key um, to base a number of different um, um, scenarios, uh, modelling, etc. So I think um, uh, this update on where we are um thank you very much i don't think i have a very i was just looking probably um, while i've got you um i did read and i was just looking for a bit of an update and i think there may have been a mention of this and i'm talking specifically about the clive um dredging if i can sort of come while i've got that opportunity to talk with you right now and it's pleasing to yeah. hear that you just there was a little bit of um a mention about um a pending lease arrangement that's um still pending um yes. that's really good i just want to um acknowledge your attendance along with um a couple of other staff i just can't recall the day that you came out um here again Fano is a classic example of consultation that unfolded 
um, at the Tai Whenua at the time, um, which um, widened itself out over the interest of not just only the Clive community, but also those that are associated in both location and area relevant, of course, to their respective Clive and Hapu. And as you may recall, Martina, um, we were looking at a number of different options. Um, none of the, none of the, nonetheless, at least a long-term arrangement. So, are you able to share a little bit more in detail as to what those pending uh, yes, discussions so, are? So, um, I'm just pretty much waiting. We are just getting. I actually receive a, um, advice from the lawyer about the lease, and I'll be um, discussing this lease option with. Um, interested parties and after I have a little bit more clear picture as um, where we are going and when, then I really like to again organize another hui with you all and discuss what these options are, what are the time frames, because at the moment um, I was actually hoping to, to have that in mind, but I don't want to have a hui before I know when we have the lease in place is everything in place so everyone is happy with the lease condition and and that we we have a little bit more clear picture as what are we doing because um there's even though i haven't been in touch but there's a lot happening behind the scenes also mm -hmm. um you know we have discussed um the plan you know we be dredging certain location of the clive mm -hmm. what are options for you know, doing uh, something with the rest of the club. And that's mm -hmm. something we definitely like to uh, explore a little bit more, but we have also have to explore uh, how we're going to fund these options. So those are all kind of in the background. So we, we, have never, mm -hmm. we haven't forgotten about it. They are happening. And I am really hoping when I have a little bit more information and approval on the list, then I'll get hui with you. Okay. I did pick up, I guess, reading between the lines, there's always the dollars on the resource, um, which yeah. is always a struggle. And of course, um, just to say to the um, those that are listening, it's not without any exception that this particular project that it's out, out at Clive, as you cross, cross over the Clive Bridge, Farno, um, as the result, and you would have crossed over the Ngarudoro if you were traveling north, uh, south, um, how the Ngarudoro has a huge impact on sediment as it pushes its way towards uh, the mouth and it starts to go back up to what was originally the old track of the Ngarudoro. Um, some call it the Clive River, some call it the Karamu. Uh, but in, in effect, uh, our community up at Kuhipatiki is starting to real the full impact of themselves being particularly a little leg of the journey upstream towards them and so the sediment i think in some places that was based on the research that martina and others was quite useful in the information as to how much of that sediment has made its way up the waterway uh the karami stream so much appreciated look forward to that and i think it might be a little bit too ambitious in march and getting that face to face who are you going probably looking towards June if we just see how all of this COVID and what's going to be uh, less restriction to enable us to meet. But while we're talking about that, nothing short as I've picked up from um, um, Roger Marker um, it's, um, and to others that this face-to-face -face dynamic is certainly nothing short of going into that real mode. I mean, while we're going through the new normal, it's only a temporary new normal. Um, and getting back to the very values of being face to face with our healthy, healthy, colourful whanau. <laughs> so look forward to that, Martina. Kia ora. Thank you. Kia ora. I see Mike's got his hand up. Thanks, Martin. Mike? Uh, kia ora, Madam Chair. Uh, look, just, just a part high. Uh, so I, I appreciate the fact that we're looking to go from a 100. 100-year flood uh, event to a 500-year flood, uh, I think flood event, uh, and I, I get the understanding and the reasoning behind it. Um, when I think back, the last time I've seen the lower Ngarororo uh, flood would have been back in 1979 when it reached the uh, stock banks 
uh, down by the Chester Hope Bridge. And it flooded the um, flooded right up to the um, railway line. Um, so part of my part of my question here is I understand what we're trying to do is contain any potential flood to within the the channel between uh, the uh, stock banks. But has there been any consideration given uh, to um, identifying potential areas where we could actually allow uh, flood water uh, to to actually leave that channel and actually control control flooding? So yeah. you know, if we get to the stage where the stock banks in danger of actually breaking, rather than wait for it to break and decide where it breaks itself, mm. identified other areas that we can areas that you know we can, if you like, control. Control flood. Minimize, yeah, that's about, yeah. that damage. So um, look, it's we're not working only with existing asset, and we are not thinking only to build a stop bank. There is going to be a quite extensive uh, work going forward to looking at the options and looking. You know, can we can we allocate an area where it's going to be a funding area for floods? Um, this definitely it's going to be outside of box thinking. So we don't want to um, be stuck and work just with the stop bank we have, because also, um, you know, that may be also problematic. I mean, how high do we want to go? And also, um, do we know co existing conditions? So uh, there's definitely um, other option being considered and wetlands and funding areas and directing the flow um, to some area where, where it goes. So yeah, that's that's going to be part of the engineering optioneering work. That's, yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and I actually congratulate, uh, congratulate the um, council for that type of thinking as needed. Kia ora. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Henny Wai? Oh, kia ora, Martina. Thank you for your yeah. um, presentation. In so what I hear a lot of is asking about the cultural values input that goes into a lot of these projects. Yeah. And, um, you know, before I was a councillor, I was a, well, I still am. I'm wearing my hapu hat and I'm 100 metres away from the Tusaikuri River. And I have to say our stock banks were built lower than the city side. But, yeah. um, you know, that's another legacy issue, um, <laughs> a cultural legacy, legacy issue of the catchment at the time. Um, but I, I always think of, you know, whether or not these access, these proper resourcing and this capacity building um, thought of when you come to mana whenua for, for input or discussion. And so you've addressed the resourcing issue, that there is resource there to, to come and regularly consult because Dr. Um, Roger talked about the regularity of consulting. Um, but the accessibility to me, I think of you know, being a, a heavy user, a frequent user of the Tutai Kuri, are there, are there points of accessibility um, to Mahinga Kai areas? You know, considering those cultural values, um, yeah. do we have capacity to look into Wahi Tapu sites along those river edges? Um, yeah. And also, you know, the notion of Kaitiaki Tanga and, and talking about these new wetland areas or restored areas that provide biodiverse, greater biodiversity um, as, a, as a benefit to the options put in place um, because habitat areas are, are crucial for developing those mahinga kai species. So um, those are some, some values I wanted to share and, and what I look at being down the road, what I'd like my children to still have access to um so yeah I, I hope that helps a little but definitely the yeah. the resourcing um needs to be appropriate for regular contact and con consultation with mana whenua kia ora this is, thank you kia this is exactly what we what we what we seek we we need to understand what those cultural aspects are and what we like to do is to um take all this significance um and plot it into the into the map, so we are we have a clear vision as a where are where are they, what we can do with them when we go and do the 
work that we are thinking not just uh, civil engineering work, but also we have to consider the the cultural aspect to it. So, um, because sometimes what happens is that we build things without thinking what other um, importance that structure may have to other people, and that's I think that's what we have to um, heavily put our focus on when we are doing this project. Most definitely the sites of significance I expect um anyway. Uh the way tapu, etc. Um um any other comments from the report? Party? Um so no thanks for, for your um uh participation today Martina and um if I could just get the uh, Māori Committee to move that they receive the Hiratanga Plains Flood Control Scheme Level of Service Review Staff Report. We have a mover, please. Māori, seconded by. Any why? Uh, all in favour? Head. Carried. Thank you. Um, yeah. uh, kia ora. Thank you, Martina. Thank you. Bye. Uh, item 11, um, we're getting through it. Um, Hawks Bay Summer 2019-2020. Um, so who have I got today? With this? So it's been, it's been written by Simon Harper. Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen. Yep. Oh, Kathleen, I hope I don't say your name pro uh, incorrectly. Cozy Niek. That's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you for and teaching it. Keith Smith. Has he not? No, just you, Kathleen. Yes, yes. So I was just, I was just going to um, pretty much take it as read, and uh, just uh, to note too that um, when we presented it in March to the council meeting, um, it has been updated the rainfall at least with the um, with the rainfall figures, and that just highlighted the prolonged nature of um, the dry conditions, and that. Um, Whereas up till March, it looked like the Rua Tanapa Plains, the um, Rua Hini Range and the, for the southern coastal area was the hardest hit compared to 2012-13 drought. But with the April data, it kind of brought, made it a kind of a broader area that was as, as badly affected or worse um, than 2012-13, or at least in terms of the rainfall. And I'll just um, share my, there's just a few other Bits that can be updated. So I just share my screen. Um, so I'll just go over um, rainfall we've had since this, just in the past few days. Uh, the just very briefly touch on soil moisture, a bit of a river flows update and groundwater levels and the outlook. So just over the past few days, we have had some um, some rain particularly in the northwest ranges, which weren't, I mean, they were below normal, but were probably the, the better of um, the areas in Hawke's Bay. Uh, we had between 25 and 16 millimetres in the Ruahini range, but really on the Hirotonga and Ruatarapa Plains, a lot of it was only um, 10 millimetres or least. So just looking at our... Um, Soil moisture again updated to the, this morning, and even looking at the hourly uh, rainfall now, uh, hourly soil moisture readings now, um, nothing, nothing has moved in terms of the soil moisture sites we have on the on the plains. And um, just a river flows update because with the rivers um, in that report, I only went up to really the end of March. So this is just uh, a note of um, the monthly, this is the monthly April um, uh, rain, uh, river flows report. So just, just the highlights again for April that um, all the rivers were quite well below normal. And just with that recent rain, however, um, just some of those main rivers have uh, are lifted above the, the sort of minimum um, cutoff level for the, for the low flow bands. So, and hopefully that might assist for a while, but um, we still, we obviously need more rain to, to, for, that to, for that to happen. With regard to groundwater levels, this again is the monthly report for groundwater levels for April and a lot of the, um, the wells that are measured are either below normal or the lowest ever. And in fact, 
caution with in terms of the lowest ever because some of the um, the time frames, the years of record for some of the wells is relatively short. And in terms of the outlook, both Met Service and NIWA have issued their May to July forecast. And for Met Service May, they're picking normal below normal rainfall, and NIWA uh, May to July near or below normal rainfall. Essentially, the same same pattern looks to persist here. It's um, lower pressures over southern New Zealand, and higher pressures sort of to the north. So we, we end up with a westerly flow over the country. So that is really my update. Thank you, Kathleen. Any questions? Oh, no. Just, I just got one question. Just in, in Peter here. Just in regard to our planting programs, and mm -hmm. with the lack of rain for traditionally, um, you plant in June, July. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether we, yeah, whether we, when we're managing those plantings, whether they should be later due to the limited. Uh, um, water in the soil. Yeah, Peter, Ian here, perhaps I'll jump in on that one. Yeah, look, absolutely right. Um, so we don't typically start our work until sort of well into May and June. Um, we'll be monitoring that pretty closely. Uh, um, and what we have found, though, is that there's been reasonable survival across uh, most of the, the, the planning over the summer. Um, what we have found is our, particularly our space poles have suffered, so that's been a bit of a problem for us. But yeah, look, we're, we're acutely mindful of any work that we're doing, and we're certainly encouraging landowners who working, we, we are working with to manage any of their own activity to, to avoid um, you know, losing, losing trees because conditions aren't right for planting. And in fact, my, most of them are kind of commenting that right now, probably not, not the best job to do because the ground's so hard so they can't actually dig holes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, uh, thanks for that, Ian. Yeah, we were thinking the same, Peter. We've, we've got some trees to um, plant and, yeah, it's usually leading into that time in the winter, but it's too dry. So it uh, just makes it a bit more difficult. We'll just have to hold off and hope. Um, any other questions? No? And so um, thank you, um, Kathleen, for your participation and, uh, and for your, um, well, it's very dry and there's not much rain. So, you know, we're in a drought. And it's interesting that comment about that it's uh, now surpassed the 2012-13 era, drought era. Um, and I thank you. So if I could get the um, committee, someone to move motion that Māori Committee receives the Hawke's Bay Summer 2019-20 report. Moved by Mike, seconded by Dr. Marker. All in favour? Move carried. So we just move on to, uh, thank you, Kathleen, again. Um, move on to item 12, which is which is sort of works from the summer report into climate change report, more depressing news. Um, so who have I got with us? Uh, there's Gavin Ide and Tom Schumann. Have we got any of those? Got Tom. Go to Tom. Okay. Take it away. Oh, kia ora, Michelle. Look, before I get into the report, so Gavin's had to leave, so um, I'll, I'll have a crack at this. But just can I just run a, an, an idea past you because um, I'm just looking at time. Yep. What if I was to attempt to roll climate change and the water update or roll all that into a lead into the discussion um, of Manage Aquifer Recharge? Because I think that's kind of, I mean, they're all, they're all sit quite broadly together which means that you could like cut straight to the activity report and minor items and then and I can try and just deal all that in, in one go. Um, would that be? Um, Sounds like a plan. It's a plan. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Do you think that saves time? Thank you. You've gone quiet. <laughs> oh, no, so, so that, 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 what, what I'm saying is I'm suggesting that I do that Afterwards, so that if you if you went to because we've got Dr. Bauer ready to um, give a presentation. Oh, uh, the aquifer workshop around, around the aquifer stuff, and I and I just think climate change water date I would use as an introduction to um, his yeah. presentation. So in which case I probably suggest that you just cut straight to the organisational activities update. Oh, okay, okay. So you're you're okay too because the the now PD the the, the workshop. 
that's it. What time was that? Two. Close of the meeting. Yeah, the close of this meeting. Okay. Then, oh, no. Okay. So we're not holding that up. Okay. Um, oh, I've got the wrong computer. Sorry. Misunderstood that. Yeah, they all sort of lead into each other, don't they? Okay. So we'll go on to item... 14. 14 was organisational activity update. Just just to fill you in on this, I don't know if we had them in previous meetings, but um, because of our participation in the um, in the extraordinary meetings with the regional council, uh, it just gives a. I don't expect you to read all of it, but just if you just focus on your catchment, and then you can see the work that's being done in your catchment, which is I think is a good snapshot. And, and if there's anything specifically you want to ask Rex or uh, James or his team, it's, it's a good opportunity. Um, so, yes, so that's the reason I put it in there. I'm sorry there's so many pages, Matua, Paula and Papa Bill, <laughs> but you're well informed. So um, are there any questions? No, no questions, but I think what this um, provided me was a far better insight of all the moving parts of the organisation. So thanks very oh, thank much. You. That's all. Thank you, Marty. Mm -hmm. No questions for James? Go, give him a headache. <laughs> no? Car playing. Okay, if, so if we could just move that the Māori Committee receives and notes the Regional Council 28th April 2020 Organisational Activities Update Staff Report. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Have a mover, please. <laughs> uh, in Hawaii, uh, seconded by Paula. Okay. All in favour? Yeah. Thank you. And now, um, so did we just cover the discussion of minor matters not on the agenda? Is that where we're on now? Or are we going back to the other copable? Um, Because we've only got one, and that was the uh, Tutai Kuri River Discharge. Oh, kia ora, Chair. Um, yeah, well, before Christmas, we had um, dairy effluent discharge into the Mangatutu, which then led into the Tutaikuri, um, and the consequence of that was um, no usual Christmas swimming in our river, um, but also the other detrimental effects it caused um, environmentally. So hopefully, uh, James, are you still with us? Or Liz? I am. I'm here. I, I think Liz oh, is still on the line too. Yep. Um, I'm still here. Yep. Oh, fantastic. So, um, you know, being at the sharp end around this marae also, um, it would be great to have an update on where that case is um, and what the process is moving forward so that everyone here uh, can hear about that. Hmm. So if either Liz or James can give us an update. I'll, I'll okay. defer to Liz on this one. Sure, thank you. Um, so where this is at is that um, at the time that the um, event occurred, we went and investig began our investigation into it. Um, investigations involve not just uh, collecting uh, physical samples and obviously waiting for them to be analysed, but conducting interviews as well with um, uh, the people that um, we believe are involved. Um, and so what we had, we obviously uh, did the sampling that was day, day before Christmas. So um, there was a hold up in uh, getting the results and everything back as there was with um, getting, um, being able to conduct the interviews. But look, what, where we have got to as a result of our investigation is that um, the company has been, we've laid charges with them and prosecuted them uh, for an offence relating to discharge uh, into water into the waterway. So effectively, it is it is now before the court. Um, there are some, not unexpectedly, some delays to the proceedings because of our current situation, um, but it is, uh, it is before the court and will go through the due process. So it is a prosecution, which is the highest um, enforcement measure that we as a council can take. And so that's really where we're at. Thank you. Um, I suppose my second part to that is um, what, what input or opportunity can Mana Whenua play in, um, I, I suppose, addressing or expressing the, the cultural impact of 
um, the Modi of, of the Awa in this in, um, incidence, how can they have input of that into this process, if any? <clears throat> So if there's a, a defended hearing, and there may not be, the um, uh, the company charged may um, may enter a plea of, of guilty, but we don't know that yet, um, then uh, we will have to, as part of our evidence to the court, um, look at all aspects of the, um, the physical impacts, the cultural impacts and so forth, and we will be looking for um, evidence at that time, but it's just too early to say yet until we know exactly what action the defendant um, intends to take. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Liz. It's um, it's good to understand the process a little bit better when we have pollution incidences like this, and we're in the process Tangata Whenua can play a greater role. So, cool. Kilda. Thank you. Uh, sad news, sad news for uh, the whānau uh, Waihoki um, um, yes. for the well, there. And um, I, I, I see many photos of my husband and his family and their childhood. That they, they've got some good swimming holes down there. And, and for that, <laughs> yes. Can I say something? Yep. Uh, look, uh, thank you very much for that, Liz. And I think there's been an update all of um, part of the process going forward now which I understand has been communicated through Ngāti Kahunga Iwi. I caught up with Shade, I think, about, oh, about three or four months before the end of last year to be informed that there is that consultation now, Liz. Uh, councils, work programmes, particularly uh, associated or in the area influence of a local marae and hapū, um, that there's now direct contact. Um, part of, of course, what came out of this was um, uh, focused specifically on in future the work program will involve a number of different processes in terms of looking at um, you know uh, what it digs out what's in the mix what's going to be separated out and um, that was a really really um, good bit of insight in terms of when that um, when that um, uh, dirt or rubbish from out of the drain gets to be taken to uh, the receiving site, there again, there's another process to ensure that there is no uh, tuna or any other um, any other um, natural, um, you know, fish or whatever. Uh, that's it's either missed out at the first um, monitoring session. So I think some good has actually come out of this over a bad example of what should have been in place in terms of best practice. So to council. Kia ora. Any other comment? No? Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, so so we're going back, I presume, I'll be going back to the, the other items. Uh, where are we? Here's our man. So I'm I'm happy to uh, do whichever way uh, you want to. I suppose what I was proposing is if, if you're happy to move those items into the workshop, I can just um, wrap, wrap wrap them um, around that workshop presentation. Um, so uh, if, if that's where you want to go, you could call um, you know call close the meeting and move to the workshop. Uh, so you um, committee members, do you want to close the workshop at at this and then? Work items, uh, I think it's 12 and 13. It's a day, 12 and 13 into the workshop. Just just before we do, Madam Chair, um, so just taking us back to the start of the meeting when we talked about the um, the uh, Wānanga in our minutes and that oh, was yes. the end, the end of this week. Yeah. Um, basically, the reason why we did that uh, was in regards to this virtual, virtual meeting. Um, so as we know, we, we our intention from our last meeting was in the month or May that we would have held this uh, one under. Uh, that was prior, of course, to the COVID stuff and going into lockdown. Um, we really are wanting to to have that one under uh, because it's holding up one or two um, one or two kopapa that will help us set the direction for this committee going forward. Um, we just wanted to make sure. Uh, committee members were happy. Not so. We know that we're going to go down to level two at some stage. That will free up um, the ability around bubbles. 
and been able to uh, uh, expand on who we have contact with. There may be some limitation around um, uh, safe, uh, safe distancing. Um, but I think it was happy, the, as long as the committee members were happy that uh, if there's a need to have this wānanga uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a virtual environment, we were happy to do so. So we talked about, you know, there's going to be a new, a new way of doing things post COVID nineteen. I suppose this is, this is, a, this is the start of that. Uh, so there may be, as I said, there may be a, a, a lightening of those restrictions around the social gatherings, but perhaps not all of our committee members are going to be comfortable, even if there are those changes. Mm -hmm. Maybe around um, underlying health issues. Generally, right. just to feel unsafe about coming into uh, into that social environment at this stage. Hmm. So it's just the ability of of Fano and Galaos to have this, Hui, that it may be a combination between um, social and and, and visual, bringing our bringing our committee together uh, to discuss these uh, to discuss the kaupapa and hold our hold our wānanga. That was the reason why we left it to the end. Thanks, thanks, Mike, for uh, bringing that. See, on, see, on you, I forget something. Um, and and uh, before Paula co comments, I suppose this was the test run for our committee. It also saves on emissions because we're not having to travel. You know, it cuts down on costs also for the regional council because they're not paying our travel, and we get to stay home, and I don't have to drive two hours back to Waitall afterwards. Um, but anyway, um, Paula, and we're going to consider if anybody can update me. Level one, is it still going to keep our Komatua safe? Well, um, there's a lot of Komatua in our, in our um, committee. Paula. Yeah, I'm a case in point, really. Uh, would I be prepared to travel? And my answer is yes. Uh, and... Uh, in, in social gatherings, it's just staying apart and whatever you touch or even wearing uh, hand protection, I, I do believe it's quite safe. And that's my point of view. I don't, I don't speak for anyone else but myself. But, Thank uh, you, Paula. I, I think, it's, I think these, these uh, hui's are important. And certainly uh, we have talked far more today than we have ever talked to. These, it's brilliant. And anyone watching this, uh, watching me, don't read anything into my actions. I am excited in what's happened today. Uh, uh, oh, thank you, Paula. I thought you were going to growl me for those papers. <laughs> thank you, uh, Michelle. Uh, <laughs> your handling of today's affairs has been absolutely brilliant. Oh, I was worried about giving too much information. I thought I might have just given you a, all an overload. So, no, uh, I appreciate that, uh, Kōrero or um, Whanaunga. Not, not at all. Uh, if I might make one more point. The point that I'm listening and I've heard today is Māori Dim is being asked to participate and come to all of these meetings, but then you don't hear anything after. And it's time for change. It's time for change because we have some very good advice to offer every organisation, and that is for sure. That's Thank my you. that's my tunnel to this meeting, and that's what I'm hearing all 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 of my uh, co delegates saying. They attend all of these meetings, and not enough has been taken taken from them or actioned on. Okay, uh, everyone. I, I suppose it's just a matter of we can probably organise something, Mike, um, a, a little bit sooner if, if everybody's happy to, to yeah. do that via Zoom. Is, is that oh, okay? Yes. I agree. Yeah. So I, I suppose that's an action for you and I, Mike. Yes. To, uh, we had discussed it with James and then COVID hit and, and um, that sort of stopped it. Chair, so, um, can I just make a couple of comments, yes, Chip? That, yeah. I guess this being my first meeting, I'm sort of un uh, unreeling all this stuff in front of me. Some of you have experienced, uh, like Mike sitting there, comfortable as understanding what's going on. Probably, 
and extract what he needs out of it, and then the excitement of Mari on the other side, Mari, I'm focusing on my mukupuna. So the decisions I make today or any other time will Kia ora, Zach. my grandchildren. Kia ora. And, uh, Kia ora, Zach. That's, that's what it's all about. To the reality for me, um, my main mukupuna, they all got parky in them. So I'm not looking after two sides here. <laughs> in, in saying, hey, they, that's, us, that's all of us, Zach. Yes, but in saying that, I'm very real too. So, you know, when I see, uh, in my mind, I'm only making, oh, this is the first meeting, but when I see, you know, and I started off about water, it is the, the end and the beginning for us. Ah, Kilda. And I, the, flow, the flow from the mountains through the paperwork, <laughs> focusing on water. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, no. Am I on the walker? Shit, I'm going to get sunk at the Marae. <laughs> I'm only passing these comments on because, you know, when you get in part of wave when you're on your walker, shit, I hope I'm not going to get tipped out. <laughs> but you think I might think for all the paperwork. I've got to be, I've got to be uh, funny about what's happening around me, but deadly serious uh, because whatever I say and do over the next two or three years will definitely my grandchildren. Yeah. So, thank you. And, and, yeah. Most list. definitely, Zach, and, and we've got all our whanau, those ones that you said, you know, the, the hapu, the whanau, they're going to ready to boot our backsides if we don't do our job. We've well, got to think yeah. about the next generation. Well, and, you know, and the other thing we think about is the tupuna are watching what we're doing well, and, we're and, and hoping that right. we're looking after our resources, eh? Otherwise, I'll take my butts too. For me, I work in mental health, so I get mixed feelings. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's our responsibility, yeah, and you can't yeah. you can't shake it. I much appreciate it. Um, so we'll 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 work on that action if, yeah. if that can be put down as action for the co-chairs to our because we want to get that moving, that one and move and get our terms of reference in order, our charter, and and yeah. Um, change it to a uh, Māori focus and a uh, uh, Māori agenda. Uh, Hi, uh, yeah, um, so, yeah, so we'll close this hui. Um, if I could just get, um, uh, we're gonna go, who we're going to have? Um, is it, who's close one of the other whana? I want to close our hui. Uh, karakia Whakamutanga or back to Papa Bill. And then we'll head into the. Oh, should we have a bit of a? Um, a James, is it a, all right? Um, I'm not quite sure who's organising the workshop, but can we come in and about? And you know, you might want to have a funny pucky break or something for about five minutes, and then because we could be sitting in another hour or so. Who are you? You're in Tom's or? hands in this regard, but he's he's giving a thumb thumbs up, Michelle. So oh, okay. kind of Tom. Yeah. Okay. Um. So if we after cut of care, if we readjourn. For the workshop at 20 past, is that all right, Tom? Kapoi, okay then. Matua, uh, Papa Bell, take it away. Oh, you got to put your sound on, Papa Bell. Oh, it's still, yeah, Kapoi. Oh, all right, can you hear me now? Yes, can hear you now, Papa Bell. Me whaka hoki to Māori or... O tātou hui ki a, a pie i roto te tōna kāinga i, uh, i nepia. Kia huriri. Kia koe, Pipiere. Kia huriri. Hai. Pipiere, ma manro, ma mana e whakakapi tātou hui. Ah, tēnā, e, e, tēnā koe, Uncle Bill. Yeah. Uh, mō tēnei hūnori. Uh, tēnā tātou uh, e te rau tangata. E... Eh, eh, E matakanohi uh, tahi mai kai rungu ki tēnei hui, i tīmatahia kai rungu te rangi mārie o tīpai kai rungu te rangi mārie, me ki rā kai rungu te whakatau ki nga unei i horahia e Zek, uh, tirohia ki te ao kai tua mai i au whatu mokopona, uh, katahi tukua mahia, uh, kai rungu ki tēnā whakatau ki uh, kia tuku whakamoemi tiano. E te atua tohu, te atua kaha, te atua kai whakoora. 
ko koe te kahinga nga mea katoa i te ao ana i au tamariki e mihi e tangi nei i tēnei wā o te kapo o hua keto e uhia nei ki a tātau. Mā te rā e kaua e mai te ngoi i a rā i a rā. Mā te mārama e whakaora i a tātau wai ngā pō. Mā te ua e hōroi i o tātau mā harahara. Mā te hau e pupu hi te pā kahu kahu ki roto i o tātau tīnana. I roto i a tātau hi koe tonga te ao ki whakaaro tātau ki te humārie ki tēnei ao ko te kaihanga i hangaia. Mā hau e te atu a tātau e manāke e tiaki o tātau whānau putanua. Kia hore te mārino e ngā rā e whai ake. Kia whakapapapaunamu ngā ara katoa i haere ae. Kia tere tere te kārohi rohi kai mua ko tō tātou hoa haere ko te rangi mārie ki tēnā, ki tēnā. Kia noho haumarurai a tātou kua hua te māki hiki ki a toi te kupu toi te mana. Tēnei te mihi atu ki a tātou nei kaihanga me tōna kaiwhako ora e ai hukaraiti. Āmene, kia ora tātou. Āmene. Thank you, Manas. Good night.